Have you ever wondered what actually happens in the body when humans experience sexual arousal? It's way more than just feelings. Behind the scenes, your brain, your nerves, and your reproductive system are having a full-blown conversation. And today, we're going to break it down step by step, scientifically and respectfully, so you understand exactly how the human sexual response cycle works. Even though male and female reproductive organs look different, they share some fascinating similarities. That's because, during development in the womb, they start from the same basic tissues. For example, the scrotum in males and the labia majora in females come from the same embryonic structure. The skin on the penis and the labia minora? Same origin. And yes, the glands penis and the clitoris are essentially biological cousins. These shared origins mean that the sexual response in males and females is actually more similar than you might think. When arousal begins, two major changes happen. Vasocongestion, blood rushes into certain tissues, making them swell. Myotonia, muscles tense up in different parts of the body. These are the main drivers of the sexual response cycle. Scientists usually divide the sexual response cycle into four phases excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. Let's go through them. Excitement phase prepares the reproductive organs for sexual intercourse. Vasocongestion is prominent, resulting in penile and clitoral erection, enlargement of the testes, labia, and breasts. Vaginal lubrication is also prominent in this phase. Myotonia may be observed, such as nipple erection or increased limb tension. In plateau phase, sexual responses are sustained through continued direct stimulation of the genitalia. In females, the outer third of the vagina becomes highly vasocongested, while the inner two-thirds expand slightly. Elevation of the uterus creates a receptacle for semen at the posterior vaginal wall. Respiratory rate accelerates, and heart rate may reach up to 150 beats per minute partly due to physical exertion but also as an autonomic nervous system response. After plateau phase, orgasm follows. Orgasm involves rhythmic, involuntary contractions of reproductive and associated structures in both sexes. In males, orgasm occurs in two stages. Emission, the contraction of glands and ducts propelling semen into the urethra, and expulsion, contraction of the urethra to expel semen. In females, orgasm is marked by rhythmic contractions of the uterus and outer vaginal muscles, while the inner vaginal region remains unaffected. These contractions, occurring at intervals of approximately 0.8 seconds, may also involve the anal sphincter and abdominal muscles. Orgasm is typically the briefest phase, lasting only a few seconds. The final phase, resolution. This phase involves the reversal of the physiological changes of earlier stages. Vasocongested tissues return to their normal size and coloration, and muscle tension subsides. Most changes resolve within five minutes, though some may persist for up to an hour. Males generally enter a refractory period following orgasm, ranging from minutes to hours, during which further erection and orgasm are not possible. In contrast, females lack a refractory period, enabling the possibility of multiple orgasms within a short time frame. So, sexual arousal isn't just about feelings, it's a carefully coordinated series of physical changes involving your brain, nerves, blood vessels, and muscles. Understanding how it works not only deepens your knowledge of human biology but also reminds us just how complex and fascinating our bodies really are. If you enjoyed learning about this, hit like, subscribe, and check out my other videos on science. Science is always better when you know what's going on beneath the surface. Thank you for your attention. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and never stop being curious about the science of life.